Hello everyone, my name's Ian. I'm a software engineer and I've been a contributor to the Singularity Container Project since around 2018. This is right at the time the project underwent a full rewrite to Go. This talk is about the motivations behind rewriting to Go and the Singularity runtime. Let's start with a bit of history. Singularity was founded by Greg Kurtzer while at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory to address the lack of rootless container solutions for HPC environments. Development started in October of 2015, leading to a first release in April of 2016. The project started to gain attention and early community feedback led to a version 2.0 being released in June of that same year. Singularity really started to take off and grew to become the leading container solution in HPC. This started to gain attention from outside of HPC due to its unique reproducibility and security properties. At this point, it was decided that a rewrite from the mixture of C, Python, and shellcode to Go was necessary. Version 3.0 of Singularity was released in October of 2018 and signaled the completion of this rewrite. Rewriting such a large code base is not trivial and was necessary for several reasons. One of the most important reasons for the migration is that Go is a modern and relatively easy to learn language. This allows developers to become productive quickly. As an open source project, it's important that our code base is accessible and inviting to newcomers in order to foster involvement and contributions. The original combination of C, Python, and shell scripts made the project relatively confusing to understand when reading through it. Another reason is when we look around at the container landscape, most projects in related tooling are written in Go. Since the rewrite, we've been able to leverage a huge amount of container tooling written by projects within the Cloud Native Computing Foundation and OCI communities natively through Go dependencies. This has allowed us to bring new capabilities to Singularity by easily integrating with the work of other projects. So let's talk about some areas we've been able to integrate. Singularity now includes an OCI compliant runtime that enables the creation and execution of OCI bundles. Here we can see the command used to create, start, and stop containers with the OCI runtime. It's important to note that unlike Singularity's standard runtime, this OCI runtime does not support rootless containers and requires privilege to use the command group. This limitation is because OCI container configurations allow them to leverage privileged features that our rootless privilege model can't support. The biggest driver of this OCI runtime was to support a project called Singularity CRI. Singularity CRI is an implementation of the container runtime interface within Kubernetes, and this has a requirement for OCI runtime compatibility. The combination of these two efforts has culminated in allowing Kubernetes to schedule and manage Singularity containers, which you feel is a pretty huge integration. Singularity is also able to support a wide range of network configurations by leveraging plugins provided by the Container Network Interface project. This makes it really easy for users to do things like set up network namespaces, port mappings, host names, and DNS. It's also possible to store Singularity container images in their native format within OCI registries. The OCI artifact specification and the OCI registry of storage project, also known as ORAS, has enabled this new method of distributing Singularity images. Here we can see some simple commands to build a Singularity container, push it to an OCI registry through the ORAS transport, and then run it by referencing that registry location. These integrations have helped us bring our project into the wider container ecosystem, but we're still working to integrate further, so please feel free to join our Slack or put up an issue in our GitHub if you have any integrations you would like to see in the future. So let's talk a bit about running containers with Singularity. As I mentioned previously, Singularity is a rootless container solution. This means that we can execute a command as a user and the container process retains the user identity and cannot be used to gain additional privileges on the system. Here we can see simply that my user ID inside and outside the container are identical. This security model is achieved by leveraging either a set UID or an unprivileged user namespace workflow to bring up our containers. The set UID workflow is used by default and enables the use of all features within Singularity. The unprivileged user namespace workflow is also a good option, but it comes at the cost of some features. The choice between workflows is really dependent on the preferences and requirements of system administrators for any particular site. Singularity uses a binary to drive its runtime regardless of workflow, so there's no need for root-owned or long-running daemons. Singularity prioritizes providing an easy user experience for common use cases while still providing options for more complex behavior to experienced users. First, it's important to understand that Singularity container images are stored in a file on your file system. So once an image is built, we can easily run it by referencing its file system location. Here we have several ways we can start running containers from a file. First, we can start the container with an interactive shell. This lets you explore your container or manually execute commands within it, just like you would on your host system. Next, we can see that we can execute a container with a specific command. This ls command will be executed within the container and the output will be directed back to your terminal. Singularity allows users to include scripts within their containers to be executed when using the run command. 
This allows containers to have complex workflows while still being easy to execute. A unique property of Singularity image files is that they are created with the execute permission enabled. This allows us to execute Singularity containers directly as a binary. Behind the scenes, this is really a shortcut to the run command. Singularity also offers a way to run containers from various sources, not just local files, as we saw before. This gives users access to a large selection of container images. When a command is started, a container uses a non-local image reference, like the command with the Docker URI at the very top. Singularity will pull the image from that source, in this case Docker Hub, do an intermediate conversion to put it into Singularity's native image format, cache it locally, and then run it. All this happens automatically and transparently without user involvement. This lets users start up almost any container with a single command. Since Singularity is focused on simplicity and integration, it's straightforward to run a container from batch scheduler scripts with the exact command. By default, the runtime sets up the user home and current working directory inside the container, making it possible for applications to use input files in those locations. Many compute intensive applications that run with Singularity can take advantage of hardware accelerators like GPUs. Since libraries for various GPUs tend to be system and hardware specific, it's hard to maintain container portability if they're embedded within the image. In order to overcome this, the Singularity runtime provides the NV and Rockham command line flags that we can see in use with the exact command here to automatically provide CUDA or Rockham libraries that are installed on the host in the container. It automatically configures library paths within the container at runtime so applications can use them easily. Another common use of Singularity containers is with parallel applications. As you can see here, we can start containers with an MPI runtime, but this requires the container to meet some requirements. First, the underlying libraries of the host and Finiband fabric must be duplicated within the image. And second, the MPI runtimes installed inside the container and on the host must be compatible. While many users only need relatively short-lived containers for batch processing, Singularity also provides a convenient way to start services as container instances. First, it's possible to start services with exec and run commands that leverage an init system, but Singularity provides a convenient way to do this through instances. When starting an instance, the container process executes a start script provided by the container image. This works the same way as the run script with the run command. The start script can contain commands to set up and run a service, or can simply be empty. Here we can see the command to start an instance called service. Once we start the instance, it's possible to run a command inside it by using the URI scheme instance colon slash slash service with the exec command. And then we can go ahead and stop the service when we're done with it. It's also possible to bypass the start script and instead run an init process by specifying the boot option. Singularity will set up the container environment so the container init system won't interfere with the host. This option works pretty well with systemd running both in the container and on the host. Recently, Singularity has been moved into a bigger community project called HBCNG on GitHub. HBCNG stands for the next generation of high performance computing, and this is a community focused on collaboration, developing projects, and modernization of both traditional HPC and enterprise computing needs. If you're interested, please check out the GitHub or join our Slack. Thank you.